Republican presidential candidates are ramping up their attacks on frontrunner Donald Trump. Listen to some of what they had to say about the billionaire businessman this weekend. I just think he's he's uninformed. He is uh, he knows what he's saying. He's smart. He's playing you guys like a fiddle, the press, by saying outrageous things. And he's all over the map, uh, misinformed at best, and preying on people's fear at worst. I think he's very divisive, and I do not believe he will last. Apparently, Donald Trump only feels big when he's trying to make everyone else look small. Of course, in the end, he looks the smallest of all. Despite all this, Trump is still drawing massive crowds, at least 4,000 people reportedly filling an arena for one of his events over the weekend in Sarasota, Florida, as thousands more listen to his remarks on speakers outside of the arena. All right, Charles, what do you make of him? He continues <laughs> to draw these massive crowds, but yet we hear from his Republican opponents saying he's not going to last. He's uninformed, says Jeb Bush. You know, I, I think there are two things. First of all, I think there's a core of people that have Donald Trump has stuck a, struck a chord with. They're going to stick with him no matter what, no matter what sort of things happen or what, happen, what he says. And if you do the math, that's probably about 8 to 9 percent of the electric right now. You know, Republicans being half, he's at 25 percent, 50 percent saying that they're hardcore, going to stick with him. Uh, but there is something to the idea that, uh, you know, every week there's some sort of weird controversy, whether it's this thing with this uh, disabled reporter. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like when he tweeted the thing about blacks killing 81 percent of whites being killed were blacks and saying, well, he just retweeted it. The notion that you never apologize or that that's weak or politically correct. I know we live in a politically correct world, but sometimes apologizing is Christian. Sometimes it's right. And, and you don't have to necessarily be as divisive as, as he's been. His core group love him for that, but I'm not sure how much further he can move the needle with it. All right, well, a lot of the Republican candidates are being forced to answer the question, Andrea, would you support him if <laughs> yeah. he's the nominee? Jeb Bush says yes, he would. A uh, Kasich, as we saw over the weekend, he was pressed on this mm -hmm. uh, on another channel, and he was kind of put into a corner. And he ultimately said no, and not not in his words. He actually said it's not going to happen. Yeah. So you basically said, I don't have to answer the question. He's refusing to answer the question. They're spending almost I don't know hundreds of millions, almost a billion dollars, the establishment to get Trump out of the race. But Sandra, they've been trying this for weeks and months, and it hasn't helped the candidates. I mean, Jeb, who tried to attack Donald, it actually hurt him. Him. And it blew back in his face. I mean, Jeb's busy attacking everyone. He's busy attacking Rubio. He's busy attacking everyone. It's not helping them. You have to give voters a reason to pull the lever for you. Right. That's the best point. And yes. that is what Cruz, Kasich and Rubio, the others aren't Carson doing. They're doing the, the best. Yeah, and they're that, giving right. Trump more, more airtime, more ammo. And Charles, you're absolutely right. People who love him, love him. And it's not going to hurt him. It's only hurting the people that are lobbing the bombs. It, there, but it seems, Harris, there is the, the, there's the group of people out there who say that they support Donald Trump. They like his ideas. Mm -hmm. They like this, you know, they like what he's putting forward, but they don't really think he's going to stick around. He's not really going to be the nominee. It seems that that notion is still widely out there. So a couple things. The real clear politics average that we, you know, sometimes will look at now has him on average nine to ten points ahead of the pack. Mm -hmm. He's picking up steam. And you talk <laughs> about some of the issues that would have been like quicksand to others. Yeah, they've been a little sticky for Donald Trump, but they're not stopping him. He's picking up steam, pulling away from the pack. Uh, and then the other thing that, that you would want to kind of notice in all of this is his ability to drive the drama. Yep. To keep people talking Stay about in him, the no matter what the conversation yeah. is. He just has to do that until Feb 1st, and then if he can potentially start to win, but there's it's a, all win behind him. There's the a question danger, is, though. is there going to be an insurgency yeah. with inside the, and I say that because that's how politicians put it, a political insurgency inside the establishment to keep him from getting the nomination. Could be, mm -hmm. but also I think that Charles brings up a good point. I mean, humility is an important leadership um, uh, trait to have, and I think the more um, he's, needs, he's reaching a point where he needs to start looking presidential. And these kinds of squabbles and his inability to say, I'm sorry, or I made a mistake, I think might end up hurting him. And mm. he can only use the, you know. And he only really gained momentum after the Paris attacks. Right. Um, well, that's in his wheelhouse. That's his sweet spot of conversation, immigration, foreign mm -hmm. policy. Yeah. All right. Well, two senior Republican senators calling for tens of thousands of coalition troops to quickly destroy ISIS, while Hillary Hillary Clinton calling out what she calls fear mongers who say we're at war with radical Islam. Plus, in the wake of the deadly terror attacks in Paris, the NSA's sweeping authority to collect phone record data comes to an end. Does that leave us less safe? 